Most people aren't aware of what took place on July 6th, 2017. But it actually has a significant impact on each of our lives because that was the day, precisely, pinpointedly, where the web crossed the threshold of no return. Um, because that was the day that the W3C greenlit uh, DRM. They greenlit the encrypted media extensions DRM for web video. With no safeguards whatsoever for accessibility, security research or competition, Despite the fact that this was the most controversial vote that the W3C had ever had, I believe it passed with only 53% of the vote, uh, which is unprecedented. Up until that point, the W3C had only passed motions um, with near consensus and compromise. Uh, but what the hell is the W3C? Well, the World Wide Web Consortium are the people that run the web, uh, the hypertext transfer protocol. Um, they're, the, they're the people that run the web. They, they decide what standards and guidelines uh, the web should be, should be operated by. And uh, let's just say that in my opinion, they have not done a particularly good job. Um, so one thing that they've done is remember their main deal is that they set up standards. That's their whole deal. They, they, they run, their entire organization exists to create the standards for the web because that's what software is. Software is a set of standards at its most fun fundamental level. It's you and I both agree that when one computer says this, the other computer should agree that that means to do this. Um, now, I love to point out this page, but the total word count of the W3C specification catalog is 114 million words at the time of writing, and this was back in 2020, so it's probably expanded since then. If you added the combined word counts of the C11, C17, UEFI, USB 3.2, and POSIX specifications, all 8,754 published RFCs, and the combined word counts of everything of Wikipedia's list of longest novels, you would still be 12 million words short of the W3C specifications. I conclude that it is impossible to build a new web browser. The complexity of the web is obscene. <clears throat> it's impossible to implement the web correctly, to implement the web securely, and to implement the web at all, because the specifications are absurdly long. Now, Drew DeVault uh, was somewhat incorrect, because there actually is a new web browser in development, Ladybird. Uh, which is not based on Chrome or Firefox like every single other web browser. Um, but Ladybird started development in 2018 and is aiming for an alpha release in 2026. So it's a long, long, long project and we have no idea how it will turn out. But we can hope that Ladybird uh, is somewhat interesting. So I just wanted to point out that maybe it's not actually impossible to build a new web browser, but it is it is extremely difficult. Um, and the web is screwed. I mean, here's a FTC report, very recent, that found that large social media and video streaming companies have engaged in vast surveillance of users with lax privacy controls and inadequate safeguards for kids and teens. Um, you know, you don't need an FTC report to tell you this. You already knew this. Uh, the web is entirely full of spying, uh, surveillance, tracking, and not just that, but uh, <clears throat> it also sucks for other reasons. It sucks because it is massively bloated and overly complex. Web pages that should take a fraction of a second to load will load really, really slowly even on super fast computers running modern web browsers because they are loading a million scripts in the background which exist only to advertise to you, track you, or, uh, you know, do other nefarious things. And, um, you know, Bitrike have a pretty funny little section on their go for hold about this. Uh, imagining that online tracking moved from using corporate computing time to using your computing time. Uh, because Gopher doesn't have any headers. 
which means that uh, this is a theory about how, how tracking would work on Gopher, that you would have to email uh, tracking at bitrike.org with this um, header of your interest cohort. Um, now, you might be wondering, what is an interest cohort? Well, uh, it actually doesn't exist anymore. It was a proposed Google thing, uh, which has been replaced with topics. Uh, so Google have this idea that third-party cookies are going to be removed from the web. Why? Because too many people are blocking them, because people are concerned about their privacy. And rightly so, third-party cookies ought to be blocked. Um, and so they have been designing a theoretical uh, API for interest-based advertising, targeted advertising, uh, ad-based surveillance. Um, and the previous version of this was called uh, interest cohorts, um, but it's been replaced with this topics API, which is does the same basic thing, but is slightly different. And you might be thinking, well, why does it matter? Why does it matter? if Google proposes some random thing? Well, because let's take a look at the W3C. So the way the W3C works is it's an organization, it's a nonprofit <coughs> that is uh, chaired by uh, a bunch of members, okay? 361 members get to vote on various issues. Uh, and should we take a look at who is in charge of the web? I'll give you a clue, it's not the good guys. Um, Adobe, we're just going to scroll, we're just going to scroll, Airbnb, um, you know, Alibaba Group, Amazon, American Express, Apple, Arizona State University, the most evil one, AT&T, you know, Bank of America, Baidu, uh, you know, it's just, you can keep scrolling, B Bitwarden, Bloomberg, there's a whole, but it's just a million, the BBC, ByteDance, Capital One. A bunch of like think tanks and NGOs that are, uh, you know, the China Electronic Standardization Institute, uh, you know, Cisco, Cloudflare, Comcast. Um, uh, you know, we're gonna keep doing this. I'm gonna go all the way. CVS for some fucking reason. Um, uh, we're gonna keep doing this. The Department of Homeland Security. Yeah, that's uh, not <laughs> strange in any way. Uh, we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. I'm going to do this whole thing, okay? We got Discord. Di like, like, what is Discover Financial Services LLC? You know, these are the people that actually run the world that we've just never heard of. And they're all the ones that are in charge of the web. You got DuckDuckGo. You got, uh, you know, there's a, there's a million of them. There's a million of them. Ethereum. Like, for some reason, Ethereum. Uh... We're going to keep going. We're going to do the whole thing. Huawei, sorry, I thought that was Huawei. Huawei is on here. Google, this is the big one, right? Why might Google get their random API into the web standards? Because they fucking run the web standards, right? Um, <clears throat> Hitachi. This looks like a Pokemon. Huawei, I told you it was there. Um, IBM. Indeed. Like, who is Interrupt Inc.? We don't know. We'll never know. Um, Intel, you know, it, it's Internet 2. Like, what is that? It sounds weird. The Jiangsu TP Block Technology Co. Limited. Domestic Block Chain Technology in China. These are the people that they put in charge of the Internet. It's a bunch of crypto bros. Um, you know, it, it, we're going to keep going. I'm not going to stop because you need to know this. Le Lenovo, LG, Library of Congress. That one seems reasonable. I'm okay with the Library of Congress being on there. I like the Library of Congress. MasterCard. Um, Meta. Microsoft. Uh, the Ministry of Mitsubishi. Mozilla. Nanjing University. The National Library of Sweden. These are the real shadowy organization that controls the world. Uh, Navy Federal Credit Union. Like Netflix. Y you wonder why, the uh, you know, the DRM thing got passed and it now is on Netflix. Well, there you have it. NHK Japan. NVIDIA. We're going to keep, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to scroll till the end of this, okay? You have to see this. It's important. PayPal, uh, you know, these are just the ones that that, that are that I'm recognizing. If you go through Salesforce, Samsung, 
if you if you go through and click Shopify, like if you if you click on the ones that you don't recognize, like fucking Skynet. <laughs> <laughs> they got Skynet in charge. Like it's not the good guys, man. I'm telling you, they're literally the bad guys from the movie. Snapchat's there, Softbox there, Sony's there. It's insane. Like, what is going on? And this stuff is just out there. Like Tencent, of course they're on there. Like why wouldn't they be? The New York Times. They yeah, of course. Like the Washington Post. Like it's TikTok. It's insane. It's just all of the people you expect it to be. The, the UNNC NFTZ blockchain laboratory. Like, they really tried to push this. And now, because this whole Web3 blockchain NFT thing failed because it was a garbage idea, but it looks like the W3 C people fell for it. And now they've got a bunch of random fucking blockchain crypto organizations on their board, and they're not going to be able to get rid of them. And, like, what happens there, you know? Viacom is on here. Like, we're going to keep doing it. I'm going to scroll through. Look, the fucking web 3D. The, the, they, yeah, we need 3D on the web. Love that. We're, we're, um, we're almost there. We're in the Zeds now. Okay, we've done it. Zoom. There you go. But what I'm pointing out here is it's not exactly the good guys that are in charge of the W3C. Now, I also want to point out, just because there's a bunch of NGOs, you know, NGOs and nonprofits are not some innocent, you know, thing. I, I'm sure you don't believe this because I, I don't think anyone does. But just because your registers is a nonprofit doesn't mean you're not motivated by money or politics. You know, any anyone can set up a nonprofit as a subsidiary of whatever business or state they operate. Um, so this is why the W3C is fucked, right? This is why the web has been massively mismanaged um, in favor of large corporations over everyday users and why the web is unusably bloated and full of ads and tracking is because the W3C is literally run by a bunch of megacorps um, and ad agencies and government NGOs. Uh, you know, who can propose stuff like the Topics API, you know, and, and, and force interest-based advertising and personalized advertising into your web browser, uh, you know, and stuff like that. Uh, look, here's their draft proposal to the W3C. Uh, if we go back to this, this bit right thing, uh, you know, here... They said, we, we tried to determine the features of your Gopher client, but it, but it's impossible in the standard Gopher protocol. So uh, please, uh, can, can you help your ex uh, improve your experience by emailing your IP address whenever it changes and the, the Gopher client to user agent? Because if you don't know, every time you access a website, your browser sends a user agent um, containing that information to the website. Uh, because the web is poorly designed uh, in terms of uh, privacy and tracking and stuff like that. Uh, so what what the hell is Gopher, by the way, you might be wondering? So Gopher is an older protocol. You know, the, the, the internet is not the web. I think some people get those two terms confused. I hope that everyone watching this channel uh, knows this by now, because I don't shut up about it. But um, the internet is a much broader term. The web is a specific protocol for serving documents over the internet. There are lots of other protocols for doing other things. Um, but the, the, the hypertext transfer protocol is a fairly recent, um, recently popular in the late 90s, it sort of blew up. But before HTTP became the predominant um, protocol over everything, which is, you know, a reason why the W3C is so, so screwed is because um, you know, let me let me just explain this to you because I I don't know if I made this very clear. So th there used to be a bunch of different protocols for doing a bunch of different stuff, right? If you wanted to download something, you would use the BitTorrent protocol. If you wanted to uh, talk to people, you would use the IRC protocol or or the email protocol uh, or Finger. If you wanted to uh, serve documents, you would use uh, something like Gopher or perhaps uh, HTTP. Um, you know, and there was there was a whole bunch of these different protocols for doing all sorts of things. Uh, maybe FTP as well for file sharing. Um, you know, SSH. There's there's a million different protocols. Most of them still exist in some form or another. Um, but specifically, the web, the HTTP, um, were particularly 
uh, liable to be bought. You know, here are the fees for how you join the W3C consortium. And as you can see, you know, it scales up with the size of your company, uh, but it doesn't scale up very well, right? Like proportionally, um, I mean, look, you can just see it. You can see it with your own eyes. 77,000 US dollars, if you're making a billion dollars, is literally a drop in the bucket. Whereas if you're an enterprise and nonprofit with 10 or fewer employees with revenues below, you know, this is going to be uh, a larger chunk of your wallet, uh, proportionally. So the web, the W3C, were particularly easy to get into you know, and influenced by certain corporations. And that's why there has been a push uh, to have everything served over the same protocol, over HTTP, even though HTTP is made just to serve text, simple text documents. That's what it was originally for, just to serve text documents. And so because uh, these uh, companies and states have a vested interest in serving as much content over HTTP as possible because it allows them to spy on you and... Uh, serve you ads easily and stuff like that. Uh, there's been a push to extend HTTP uh, as far as it can possibly go so that everything takes place over this one protocol that was not designed to do all these things by extending it and extending it and building on top of it until it becomes impossibly bloated. And that's how we've ended up in the situation that we're in. Um, but before HTTP was the dominant protocol, um, there was Gopher as the dominant document serving protocol. Now, Gopher is not perfect. Gopher has a lot of problems. Um, its number one problem is it's written in perhaps the worst markdown language ever invented by man, uh, which is called the Gopher Maps. Uh, if you thought HTML and CSS were bad, uh, like look into Gopher Maps. It is just designed by an insane person. They were definitely on crack when they made that. Even the people who've designed Gopher uh, talk about how terrible it is. It's really, really bad. So that's one reason it fell out of favor. But another reason it fell out of favor is that, so Gopher was, was invented by the University of Minnesota. And in 1993, they decided to charge licensing fees uh, that if you wanted to use Gopher, you'd have to pay the University of Minnesota licensing fees. And no one liked this. Uh, whereas the web, you know, did not charge licensing fees. And so that's another reason people switched off of Gopher. There's a couple of other things. Uh, the, the, the web HTTP is a, a little more versatile. Everything in Gopher has to be a very strictly hierarchical file system-like format, whereas uh, hypertext is a, a bit more versatile. Um, but in September 2000, just in case you were wondering, uh, Gopher was relicensed under the GPL. So you don't have to pay licensing fees anymore, and you haven't since 2000. But that is one of the things that contributed to Gopher's decline. But Gopher still exists. Um, as you saw, you know, this is a Gopher hole. Uh, there, there's plenty of people still using Gopher. It's a much, much simpler... Um, it's, it's, it's a much, much simpler protocol uh, here. You can learn about it all on Wikipedia in the technical details section. I don't really understand most of this. Um, this is what this is what Gopher looks like. Uh, <clears throat> uh, but thankfully, there's another better protocol, in my opinion. In my in my opinion, there's a better protocol uh, called Gemini, which is quite similar to Gopher in that it's also very very simple and just pretty much serves plain text. Uh, but it has a couple of advantages. Um, as you can see, here's here's from the project Gemini page. Gemini is a new internet technology supporting an electronic library of interconnected text documents. Uh, blah, blah, blah. You, you, you can read this on your own terms, uh, your own time. Uh, but the good thing about Gemini is that it's written in, this is what Gemini, this is what Gemini markdown looks like. It's called gem text. So this is what, this is instead of having to write HTML tags or the insane go from app stuff, you just write this in plain text, you know, uh, headings, have a hash, subheadings have two hashes, text is just text, and links have a little arrow equals, and then is that greater than or less than? I always forget. And that's it. That's basically all of gem text. You've just learned gem text. Imagine if HTML was that easy. If only we can dream. Um, but that's how easy it is. Uh, 
you know, to, to, to write gem text. So that's, that's, in my opinion, the main advantage. The other advantage is that uh, Gemini supports TLS encryption when uh, Gopher is not encrypted. Uh, so that might be nice for sort of a privacy uh, thing. But both um, Gemini and Gopher make it pretty much impossible to track you and pretty much impossible to write anything super, super bloated. Uh, you know, every single Gemini, uh, they call them capsules, um, is going to be, it's going to load pretty much instantly, even on slow connections, because it's just text, a few a few kilobytes of text, um, or, or, you know, I don't even know, nothing. It's nothing. It's it's just text, you know, very, very lightweight. Uh, there's, there's no scripting, there's no styling beyond, you know, heading, subheading, and plain text. And you can also do, like, code blocks or um, unformatted text, you know, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, and it just makes it better. It just makes the browsing a much, much, much better experience because uh, they, the content is the only thing you can have. There's no, you, you know, some people say content is king, blah, blah, blah. But on, on Gemini and Gopher, there's nothing other than content. There's no room for it. Uh, which is why I strongly support those protocols. See, a lot of people seem to believe that the web as it exists is basically a neutral tool that it's perfectly viable to write uh, small, simple, brutalist websites. And, you know, I happen to agree with them. I happen to agree with them on that specifically. Here's my website, you know, it's it's small, minimal, perfectly viable, uh, <laughs> you know, whatever. Uh, text, it works great. It loads super fast, even on slow connections. Uh, and you, you can definitely have a website like this, but the problem is that you give them an inch and they'll take a mile, right? If you give people the options to write absurdly bloated um, websites, if you give people the option to track their users across websites, they're going to do that. Um, and as you've seen, the, peop the web is not neutral. The web is not a neutral tool. The web is designed by a series of uh, corporations and uh, governments and NGOs and think tanks and nonprofits and so on who do not represent your best interests. Uh, so the only way to fix the web would really be to completely restructure the way that the W3C works um, and uh, make it much more democratic uh, kick off all of these, you know, ABC news <laughs> and uh, replace them with some sort of, perhaps even if I were to be quite radical, a directly democratic system where the users can vote on policies. I don't know how that would turn out. Listen, I'm just, I'm just spitballing here, but whatever the case may be, this is clearly not, this is clearly not viable. Okay. This is clearly not the best system. This is, I mean, you don't need me to tell you that you use the internet, you use the web and you know how broken it is. You don't need me to tell you that this has not worked. Um, and so obviously that sort of thing is never going to happen, right? The W3C is not, uh, you know, it's actually crazy that they just put the Department of Homeland Security on their front page. Like, it's fucking wild. Uh, but, but anyway, uh, you know, if you want an internet that isn't controlled by the Department of Homeland Security... You have to, you, you, you simply can't use the web. I'm sorry. It's just, it's just the case. It's just the, the way it is. You're going to have to use, um, some sort of different protocol. You know, the, 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 there's a lot of, um, attempts to fix the web by building on top of it. Oh, we're going to make a new, uh, we're, we're, we're going to make a, a new social media platform that is better. You know, uh, we're going to, we're going to make, uh, the, the Fediverse. We're going to make a uh, co-host we're going to make whatever. Um, and they're never going to work because they're fundamentally built on bad technology. Uh, if you really want uh, to engage with community on the internet, uh, it's very simple. You should be looking towards independently owned, uh, non-commercial uh, projects uh, that aren't run by the Department of Homeland Security, you know, and Google. 
you should it's, it's it's not very complicated you you it's the people who you think are doing it are the pe people who are doing it right and you avoid those people um and it's not to say that you know something like gemini or gopher are like tor right you can run them over tor if you want but they're not designed to be like super 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 private and and uh protect you from all spying they're just designed to be to have basic sensible defaults effectively uh <laughs> Um, and, and, you know, if you want, I think something like social media is just never going to work because it's not, and I've come up with this very funny phrase, it's not Dunbar compliant. Uh, you know, you need to find communities that are Dunbar compliant. In other words, they consist of uh, less than 150 people uh, because otherwise it's not really a community, is it? You know, uh, no one really thinks of these large uh social media platforms, Reddit, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, whatever the hell, as communities, uh, they might have sub-communities in them, but they're not communities. They can't possibly be communities because they're too big, they're too centralized. Um, and that means you have to see a bunch of bullshit from people that you don't care about and don't even like. And not only that, but they are obviously... You, you have very, very limited in what you can do. It sucks. I recommend that you look into public access Unix systems. So I'm a big fan of Publix's public access Unix systems. Are, um, they're, they're a very old idea. Um, they're just a computer that you can SSH into and have an account uh, that runs a Unix-like operating system, like a Linux or a BSD flavor. Uh, and it's a way of computing socially. It's uh, built from back in the day, the old days. Uh, you used to work somewhere or have a terminal somewhere, and that terminal could connect to a main server, and everyone would have main servers. If you're wondering why Unix is formatted the way it is, uh, which you're probably not, because you probably already know this, but if you, um, you know, you have your Unix file system, uh, and you see these, oh, CD slash, you know, uh, you have all of this stuff and then you have this uh, file that is like home and then you can have a bunch of different users on there, right? Uh, like why is this so far back in the, the file tree? Because that's how computers used to work. You used to have a whole bunch of different users on the same mainframe. Uh, you know, like this computer has two, uh, two different users, um, plus the root user obviously. Uh, uh, and so a public access Unix system just works like that. You have your own sort of home directory inside of a public open uh, Unix system because people who worked on with terminals and mainframes uh, really liked the social element uh, of sharing a computer and wanted to expand that beyond just sort of the work environment uh, or the research university environment into uh, for fun, doing it for fun. And that's what public access Unix systems are. Uh, they've been around since the late 80s. They're still going today. Uh, you can join a whole bunch of them. I'm not going to start listing them off. You can find me on a couple of them. Uh, I'm also not going to start listing them off. You'll have to look yourself. That's part of the fun. Part of the fun is exploration. Um, it's like Minecraft. The fun is exploring. Uh, but that's pretty much pretty much what it is. Pretty much how it works. Uh, this is like it's like a good version of social media. You will share a computer. You learn things. You talk to each other. You host a little Gemini site or go for hole or website. Most public access Unix systems will let you. They'll offer some sort of hosting, whether it be on the web or on Gemini or Gopher, um, which I think is the best option if you want to start using uh, Gemini or Gopher or host your own personal website. I think. Hosting it on a Pubnix is a, a really good idea because they are great little ecosystems. Um, so you can look up uh, this website, tildeverse.org, and join one of these if you want. There you go. I told you I wouldn't just name them off, but that's that's your little... Uh, hint. Okay. Uh, and then we can together... Just escape the the fucking web because the web is busted, man. This shit is just done. This shit is just just cooked. This shit is just cooked, man. You got to get out of here.